Alright, welcome back to part 3, Rendering. So this is our final output for the scene that I did. And we're going to jump back into Maya, where now I get to set up all the cool redshift settings and uh, take advantage of my cool GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. And I also have a 1080 Ti, so I'm uh, using Deadline for my little mini render farm here. Um, choosing some HDRIs that I found online. Uh, I'll leave a couple of links in the description below for where you guys can find some nice freebies to try out. Um, this is also real time, so you can see here once it computes, it loads up pretty quickly. And uh, I use the uh, progressive rendering here. You can see how fast this stuff updates. So uh, then I go back into the uh, materials, and you'll see, remember, uh, we can separate these out into five separate texture sets. So we've got uh, the head, the chest, uh, waist, pelvis, arm, arms and legs. So I'm going through here and setting up all the corresponding maps, the four basic maps, the diffuse, metallic roughness, and uh, the normal. Um, by the way, this page is a great little resource over on the Substance uh, website. Check this out. It'll show you all the uh, correct settings to plug in and what values and what uh, metalness to use, GGX mode, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to go through all these here. So pop ahead here to uh, all the maps are assigned. You can see the uh, normals are kicking in and I'm going through and just kind of noodling around with all the different post effects right here. But it's really fast and you can kind of get in here and just start experimenting. I find that I always uh, change up my camera angles quite a bit and I'm Constantly rotating the map around to see what I would get. Um, I like to change up some different maps. This one I also like too. This is the uh, Newport Loft map that has some great warmth to it. So I like to pop this one in here. And also, don't be afraid to go in and pop up your exposure a little bit too. Um, I find that sometimes the defaults are a little bit dim. Uh, for some reason here, I think I tried to add a aerial light because I thought I was going to try to maybe light this in this particular setting, but I did change the map to fit a different background plate later on here, which we'll switch to in a second. But uh, yeah, I mean, Retro is awesome. It's my go-to renderer. I've also used RenderMan and Arnold, but for speed, um, I noticed Redshift, I'm just in love with Redshift for the last three years now, so I use it exclusively. Here's the, uh, the final map that I chose. Um, I think this might be a free one too. I'll, I'll link to this one in the description as well if I can find it and I'm just picking some different angles here letting the progressive renderer kick in uh, at one point I think I decided to just stick with the default looking back at this lit wall and then I load up the corresponding high-res backplate and the HDRI is matched to the uh, angle and then I uh, set up the render and here we go so that's pretty much how simple it is to set all the stuff up and execute a little turntable render here. And uh, we got some cool robots doing a little, little bit of action here in this warehouse. So thanks again for watching this three-part series. And I encourage you to uh, get a Threadripper. It will really improve your workflow. Thanks for watching.